Mr. Sterling, thank you very much for being here. What are they doing? What is Lynn Wood? What are Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell doing? Who the heck knows? I mean, it's Looney Tunes. It's the president's literally coming to Georgia to campaign for the same two senators that his two former lawyers who are filing lawsuits to contest the election with the same claims the president made in his very long 46 minute uh, video yesterday that have already been debunked. I, I'm speechless. That's the best I got right now. Yep. Did you know Linwood before this? Not really. Of course, if you're in Atlanta, you know of Linwood, and he did actually live about 0.6 miles that way a little while ago, about far from where my house is now. Um, but I never had to deal with him directly. I mean, I, I saw the, the the movie about the the, the Olympic bombing. That's about close as I ever got to see Linwood. Because hmm. he brought you up personally. So here's what they said yesterday. They have fought so hard to get rid of President Trump and tried every dirty, nasty, evil, illegal trick in the book to do it. Yeah, it is pure evil. You listen up, Gabriel. You're not going to sell our votes to China. You listen up, Gabriel. What does that mean? Yeah, I heard, <laughs> I heard about it. Again, who knows? I mean, it's it's a, as I said in a, a, one of the conferences today. This all comes out of fever dreams. I mean, there's just no basis in any reality whatsoever. But there are people who are emotionally tied to the president, and the president is taking advantage of that. And one of the other things is people like Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell are taking advantage of people not understanding the ins and outs of a re relatively complex uh, system of how elections work, but. The reality was Sidney Powell's main claim is that these Dominion voting machines flip votes. We literally did a hand tally, and it was 0.105% off of the um, uh, total ballots and 0.0099% off of the margin, showing that the machines scanned exactly what the ballots that every voter cast said. I mean, but she's continuing to stick with it. At that same rally, somebody asked her about the hand recount. She says, no, no, they did it on the machines. They're lying to you. I mean, they're just lying to people. And I really have a problem with somebody like Lynn Wood, who hasn't voted in a Republican primary since 2004, telling Republicans, don't vote for the Republican Senate candidates. It's maddening. I, I can't even begin to put words to it. I mean, if this were a science fiction movie, you'd almost think that they were Democratic operatives looking to depress the Republican vote. But they're not. They're supporters, ardent supporters of President Trump and Republicans. Um, do you think that the upshot of all of this is that it will depress the vote in Georgia? I, at this point, there's no way that it can't. And the unfortunate part was the president put everybody in this position when he went to Senators Leffler and Purdue and basically said, you need to call for Secretary Raffensperger to resign, my boss, for no apparent reason. And they said because of failures in the vote and a lack of transparency. Allison, you know we were having press, two press conferences a day and putting out hourly press releases and what was going on with the count. So I don't know how much more transparent we could be. We did a hand recount to verify the outcome. I don't know how much more secure we could be. I mean, we're, we're talking about the most secure election in the history of the state of Georgia and the history of the United States. So there are statements that will depress the vote, we think. Then there are statements that threaten the lives of election officials. I don't know if you heard the president's lawyer, Joe DeGeneva, go after Chris Krebs. Did you hear what he said on a radio show? Um, if, if, in my quote unquote impassioned plea from the other day, the first thing I talked about was a former U.S. attorney, Joe Geneva, talking about having Chris Krebs, a patriot who ran CISA, the Cyber and Infrastructure Security Agency, to be shot. That was what I opened with. But what really brought me to that day, yeah, that was bad. But again, Chris, he took a big high profile job. You know, I took a higher profile job. The secretary ran for office. There was a 20 something tech who was working for Dominion Voting Systems, who was innocently doing his job, and some of these conspiracy guys were videotaping him and adding commentary about stuff they didn't understand or didn't care to understand, saying he was manipulating votes. He was moving one report from one machine to another machine. Normal processing stuff. And they put that out there, and then within a few minutes, there were people putting gifts of nooses saying, may God have mercy on your soul, you have committed treason. I mean, that's a death threat. And then this kid, this kid had a unique name. They put his name out there, and his family started getting harassed. That was pretty much the straw that broke the camel's back for me because this kid just took a job.
He just took a regular job like the hundreds of thousands of other elections workers around this country who are just doing their job diligently and well. They don't deserve it. Yeah, neither do you. Neither does Chris Krebs. Just because you took a high-profile job doesn't mean you have to get death threats and your family has to get death threats. And so what do you say to Joe DeGeneva? Dude, you, you know what the heck you're doing. It's knock it off. I mean, I don't have any either, easier way to say that. He said he was joking. Is this in any kind of environment where a joke like that can go over? No, it's not. Then there's Michael Flynn, um, the former national security advisor who President Trump just pardoned, who is calling for martial law to be invoked so that they can hold a new election. Your thoughts? We have a constitution. Every person who works in the government and has been elected to government swears an oath to that constitution. This was the most secure election in the history of the United States in 2020 because of all the efforts of hundreds of thousands of men and women across this country to then say, no, no, we're going to throw the whole thing out and start over under martial law. I mean, I will say this. If they had another election, I have a pretty good feeling that the outcome would be. But we don't do that in this country. The electors are going to vote on December 14th, and Joe Biden will be the president-elect at that point officially. Gabriel Sterling, you seem to be maintaining your sanity somehow, despite all of this. And uh, we really... Thanks, Allison. I, I cover it well, I guess, at this point. I guess so. We appreciate you speaking out and uh, all of your words and your time this morning. Thanks. Have a great day. You too.